Ed and Lorraine Warren are infamous demonologists and ghost hunters who became famous following the release of The Conjuring back in 2013. Now, sadly, both Ed and Lorraine have since passed, but they have left behind a terrifying legacy filled to the brim with ghostly encounters and demonic possession. These are the top five scary demon cases investigated by Ed and Lorraine Warren. Let's jump in. Coming in at number five, we have The Conjuring House. Upon its release in 2013, The Conjuring quickly became a fan favorite in the horror genre, with it being met with critical acclaim. The film itself follows demonologists and ghost hunters Ed and Lorraine Warren who head to a home in the country after a family reported demonic activity inside of their home. Now, At the time of the release, people knew very little about Ed and Lorraine Warren or the true events surrounding this investigation. The Perrin family moved into their haunted Rhode Island home in 1971. Not long after, Carolyn, Roger and their five daughters began to experience strange goings on. Brooms going missing, scraping noises and small piles of dirt appearing out of nowhere. All small things at first which soon developed into big things. The girls eventually began to notice spirits around the home, with the history of the home soon being revealed. Many people had drowned in the lake and of course the worst spirit of them all was Bathsheba, a woman who devoted herself to the devil and took her own life on the property, cursing anyone who would take her land. Ed and Lorraine Warren of course came to investigate the situation, with Lorraine conducting a seance to attempt to communicate with the spirits tormenting the family. During the seance, Carolyn became possessed, rising from the ground in her chair and speaking in tongues. Following the seance, the Warrens were kicked out of the home, with the family continuing to live there until 1980. Before we jump into number 4, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, it really helps out a lot. Coming in at number 4, we have Amityville. Back in September of 1977, Jay Anson published a book called The Amityville Horror, which would later become the basis of a series of films released from 1977 onwards. The book is claimed to be based on the paranormal experience of the Lutz family, a case which of course led to many controversies and widespread attention. Now, Some history before diving into the story of the Lutz family. Back in November of 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr. shot and killed six members of his family at 112 Ocean Avenue in the suburban neighborhood in Amityville. He was ultimately convicted of second degree murder and sentenced to six life sentences, with him passing away in custody in March of this year. Now, DeFeo had reported that voice had told him to kill his family. Whether these claims were true, we don't know. Jumping forward, in December of 1975, George and Kathy Lutz and their three children moved into the same home, and after just 28 days, they fled the house, claiming to have been terrorized by paranormal entities while living there. On the evening of March 6, 1976, the home was investigated by Ed and Lorraine Warren, along with a television crew from Channel 5 New York. During the investigation, a series of pictures were taken, one of the images alleged allegedly showing a demonic boy with glowing eyes standing at the foot of the staircase. The Warrens quite quickly suggested that the home was occupied by malevolent spirits, with the Warrens' visit to the home being depicted at the beginning of The Conjuring 2. Coming in at number 3, we have The Smurl Haunting. The Smurl Haunting took place between 1974 and 1989, with Jack and Janet Smurl of West Pittston, Pennsylvania alleging that a demon was inhabiting their home. The claims gained a lot of attention as you would expect, with demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren once again stepping in to solve the case. Now the family moved into the home on Chase Street, with them claiming that they were being disturbed by a demon that caused loud noises and bad odours, with one report stating that the dog was randomly thrown across a room. In 1986, Ed and Lorraine Warren arrived at the home, and according to Ed, the demon that was inhabiting the home was incredibly powerful, with it shaking mirrors and furniture after they tried to get it to leave by playing religious music and praying. Ed even claimed that he felt a significant drop in temperature and saw a dark mass inside of the home. The demon also supposedly left a message on a mirror that read, Get out. Ed and Lorraine Warren went on to state that their experience at the small residence was unlike anything they had investigated at the time. Coming in at number 2, we have The Snedeker House. Now, Many of you will be familiar with The Snedeker House Haunting thanks to the movie The Haunting in Connecticut. The Haunting in Connecticut movie was released in 2009 and directed by Peter Cornwell, and supposedly follows the alleged haunting of Carmen Snedeker and her family. Now, The movie has a ton of controversy surrounding it, with the author of the book the movie was based on even distancing himself from
from the accuracy of the events depicted in the book. Now, the film itself specifically focuses on the fictional Campbells as they move into the new home, which was formerly a mortuary to mitigate the strains of travel on Matt, her cancer stricken son. However, not long after moving into the new home, the family becomes haunted by violent and supernatural forces. Now, the true story is a little, well, a lot different. In 1986, Carmen and Alan Snedeker moved into a new home with their daughter and three sons. While exploring the home, they discovered tools used by morticians. Very creepy indeed. With it being discovered to be a form of funeral parlor, with the eldest son beginning to see ghosts and be haunted by terrifying visions. The family eventually turned to demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren, who proclaimed that the home was infested with demons. Now, this is supposedly all very much true, however, many have had their doubts over the years, including Snedeker's landlord, who found the entire story ridiculous, even noting that prior to the family moving in, there had been no complaints or unusual activity inside of the home. On top of that, the Snedekers stayed for a total of two years before finally deciding to leave. And finally, coming in at number one, we've got Enfield Poltergeist. Taking the Warrens across the ocean, the Enfield Poltergeist has become a popular paranormal case, with it also being the focal point for The Conjuring 2. The Conjuring 2 was released in 2016 and followed Ed and Lorraine as they traveled to Enfield in the United Kingdom to assist the Hodgson family, who was said to be experiencing paranormal activity inside of their home in 1977, with the daughter Janet even becoming possessed by a former resident. Now, this movie is very much based on true story, however, when a paranormal experience is dubbed real, people tend to try and find holes in the story, with many doubting the accounts of the family. Like I said, the Enfield Poltergeist was a claim of supernatural activity between the years of 1977 to 1979, with it specifically involving two sisters, Margaret and Janet. In August of 1977, single parent Peggy Hodgson claimed she had witnessed furniture moving and heard knocking sounds around her home. A police officer arrived on scene and he himself reported seeing a chair wobble and slide across the floor without any rhyme or reason. Following this, disembodied voices were heard, loud noises echoed around the home and the children even began levitating. More than 30 people were reported seeing furniture move and heard voices around the home. Ed and Lorraine Warren were of course called in to assess the situation, with them visiting the home in 1978 and were convinced that the events had a supernatural explanation. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with that list? What cases investigated by Ed and Lorraine spooked you the most? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top 5 Scary, Conjuring Universe Demons Part 2. Lynn Durbin said the crooked man needs his own movie. Well, I think it's happening. They said it would, but you can't trust anyone these days. I don't know what's happening. Fingers crossed. Kirk Morrison said, Lucy, once I see you're making this list, I always hit thumbs up as I know I will enjoy it. Good, you've got good taste, because give me a thumbs up and keep in a thumbs down. Just kidding, don't do that. Thumbs up for everyone, all around. Me the most. Kung Fu said, Valak in the Nun form is the scariest to me, and if you did an insidious installment, Lipstick Face Demon wins hands down. Facts, the guy that played Lipstick Face Demon also played Bathsheba in The Conjuring. Fun fact, the more you know. No one asked, but there you go. <laughs> AGC said, Black Chuck should become a returning character. Queen Lucy, you're looking, <laughs> oh yeah, this is like so British. Hold on. Queen Lucy, you're looking well fit. Great to see you back in the studio. When are you and Keegan doubling up again in a video? Um, I don't know, when I decide we don't talk to each other anymore. When I decide I want to be nice to him, maybe then. <laughs> I don't know, probably tomorrow. I'll ask, I'll see. Brandon McPeak said, I think you should have a horror reaction channel. Would love to see that. Where have you been, Brandon? I do. It's called Top 10 Central Dark. Go check it out. I'm on there reacting to horror. Fake fan. Nicholas Gentry said, gotta know, what is that tattoo? Uh, I've answered this before, but it's just the Rocky Mountains. It's old, but there you go. Fun. Needs a touch up? Don't criticize. I'm not ready for the pain. <laughs> Hurt like a when I got. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you later. Ed and Lorraine Warren are infamous. Dem <laughs> okay, fixed my hair. <laughs> Can you do that? <laughs> okay. <sighs> they didn't put. <sighs> Out of breath. With them claim. Wait, that doesn't make sense. What was the original date I, I gave? 1974. <laughs> Um, how do I word that sentence? Now they moved back in, they moved into the home. Cool story, bro. <laughs> cool, cool, sick, sick. <laughs> I just need to check my Uber Eats. I've got eight. Did you get? Got eight minutes. Oh, I got some Cobb salad. Cobb salad? <laughs> of all things. It's really good, actually. <laughs> Cobb.
got my cobs on the way. Though I didn't finish this point, I'm pretty sure it's fake. I think the daughter came out and was like, just kidding. That's how it ended. She was faking being possessed. She was doing it for fun. I want to make it seem like we fought. <laughs>